tired of it, it right it has become so so critical nowadays it has become you know something that one cannot live without and with lots of technologies coming in in the ai domain okay it's not that ai was not there earlier okay before these llms that is the large language models that came into picture okay um we did have ai okay and it was not as easily available as now it is today and uh, it since i i believe firmly that since chat gpt has come in okay uh, this thing has really uh, uh, i mean boost i mean there's a lot of boost to this thing and it's going to grow and grow and grow and uh, you know this is the time to get into uh, learning ai so before we start this webinar, uh, I would like to, Chaitali has already given a brief introduction, but I would like to give more introduction to myself. My name is Manasi Shahani and I am a, a trainer consultant with Synergetics and I've been training for the last five years in the in this particular domain itself. So I specialize in data and AI. So I have been doing trainings in that and I have been told this is being organized for Kerala University. So I'm hoping there's a lot of young crowd, though I can't see nor can you see me. But yeah, I'm hoping there is a lot of young crowd out there. And uh, I hope, you know, you will be learning this training. I mean, we'll be learning a lot from this webinar and uh, I will be covering lots of things. So what I intend to do is I will be uh, talking a little bit about um, AI first, I will be introducing uh, what is artificial intelligence. Okay. Uh, what are the different tools inside artificial intelligence? Okay. Because it's a very broad uh, concept. Okay. It doesn't end at artificial intelligence inside that also. Since generative AI has also come in. Okay. So we can't forget the earlier uh, concepts of AI. So I will be just doing an overview of those concepts. Okay. Then moving on, I will be talking about little importance of AI and all of that definitely will be there. And once that is done, I would like to show you all two demos, okay, uh, or two or three, depending on the time that we have. So I will one, I will be showing you all how to, you know, uh, on machine learning, I will be showing you all one small demo on machine learning. The second demo is going to be on uh, translate text. So we are going to enter a text and it's going to translate in whatever language we want. So it's going to do a language translation. OK, and the third demo, if time permits, OK, I am going to focus on speech translation. So let's say I speak in one language. OK, let's say I uh, talk in Hindi, English, whatever. It should translate in another language, probably French, German, uh, Spanish, etc. OK, so it has to not just translate, but it has to speak. OK, so let's see how we can do that using the services. So what we are going to do basically, so I told you all I'm going to talk about AI and all of that. Along with that, I am going to map this to the AI 900 curriculum that is there. And towards the end, I am going to talk about uh, from where can you study AI 900? Um, if you all are students, you all are instructors, okay, or uh, trainers like me or teachers, you have special benefits to uh, appear for the, not benefits actually, but you can appear for the certification. You can use Azure. How can you use Azure? All of that, because whatever I am going to show, okay, it is going to use the Azure the pre-existing Azure models, okay, AI models that are there. I'm going to use those models itself to do the demos, okay? And of course, along with AI, okay, you, you have uh, certain cloud concepts that need to be covered. So before we uh, start AI, let me cover a few cloud concepts because we are going to see or use Azure extensively. Like I said, we are going to work only on Azure cloud since the sort of, since our webinar is about AI 900 and it's a certification brought to you by Microsoft. So we need to do a little concepts of cloud before we get into uh, AI 900. 
so let's so this is overall the gist of the webinar okay and depending on the time we'll see how the demos go about and etc okay so i i want to focus more on i want to go more demo oriented rather than me just talking and talking and talking okay and i want this to be more interactive so that we can uh y'all can you know um uh answer the questions that i ask okay so I just want to know, do you have any knowledge on cloud? Like what is a resource group? What is, has anyone ever worked on Azure cloud? Have they ever created any service on Azure cloud? Just put a, just put a little brief introduction to that if possible or in the chat, please. And uh, let me know. Just let me know whether you know what is a resource group. Do you know uh, what is, have you ever worked on Azure Cloud? Just a brief introduction would be fine. Okay, yes, no, don't worry. I'm going to cover everything any which ways, but still I want to know from you all. Like just a quick background check. Please put it in the chat box, guys. So I should assume that nobody is aware of Azure resource groups, cloud, nothing they're familiar with. Yes, guys. <laughs> yes, guys, I all familiar with a little bit. I mean, I'm not going to go in depth. Okay, but I want to know overall, like what is because it's going to require when we do the demos. So I just want to finish it off very fast. Okay, so I'll just give an introduction very quickly. So what we are going to do basically, uh, we are going to create services, the AI models that are there. I'm going to create them on Azure. Okay. So when we create on Azure, okay, um, first of all, all these services are called as platform as a service. So what is platform as a service? Basically, this is something that you need to configure application. So it's an application that you need to configure. So normally what happens is that uh, your cloud is basically like services being run on the internet. Okay. So whenever you are running any application, Okay, whether it's a website or a mobile app or whatever. Okay, you know that we require uh, we need an operating system, we need certain memory, we need a VM, a virtual machine, correct, to you know uh, uh, deploy our website or our application, correct. So, on the, if I don't want to you know configure the physical aspect of a website, let's say I don't want to. Uh, figure out what kind of operating system I need, what kind of virtual disk I need, what what should be the size of the memory and etc. All those things, if I don't want to configure, I just want to say that, okay, I want to deploy this service. I want to deploy this application. Okay, this is the region where I want to deploy. That kind of a service is called as platform as a service. And once you create that service, okay? Once you create that service, on top of that application, you decide what kind of data you want to put, how you want to use that application for your data, okay? So this is what is platform as a service. So all the AI models that we are going to create, okay? All the machine learning demo that we are going to do, okay, they are all, platform as a service or we also call it short form is SAS. clear the next term that i would like to talk about is called as a resource group now what is a resource group so when you work on azure okay by default you create a resource group okay you have to create a resource group now what is a resource group it is like a logical container Okay, where your resources are stored. Okay, let's say my application 
okay requires a virtual machine okay i'll write it down a vm let's say a database okay let's say a storage account okay storage account is like how we store our files okay for files if i want to store we can create a storage account which will be online okay similar to our file system on the laptops or desktops that we have okay so let's say i have these services that are required or resources that are required i can store them okay at one single location rather than you know putting you know put, putting them at 10 different locations now what do i mean by this so you know when you are working on a project normally what do you do you tend to keep all the uh, work related to the project in one folder right and you give it a logical name like this is for this project you mention the name of the project and etc why because things become easy to search for you right it becomes easy for uh, locating that particular file or oh, this is the things that i require in this particular project this is where i have stored things right so the same thing if i want to do on for my website or for my application or whatever that is there it is necessary to put all the resources that are there in one container okay rather than scattering them across 10 i mean across different places okay you can may put them into a logical manner so that you know let's say you no longer need that application okay you no longer need the uh, vms or whatever required in the application you can just go and delete this entire resource group okay towards the end of this webinar that's what i am also going to do whatever i show i'm going to put it into one container one resource group and once i have completed the demo okay i'm going to delete the entire resource group so what happens i don't have to individually go and delete the resources that i have created so now we are going to see how to create a translator service we are going to see how to create a speech service okay those are nothing but resources on azure okay and if i want to delete them once this demo is done i'm not going to go and individually delete them right i don't have that much time so we need a logical grouping and that is done through the resource group okay so these are the two terms that i really wanted to introduce to you all okay so uh, platform as a service all these ai models are platform as a service and we need to use the concept of uh, resource group okay whenever we are going to do the demo i am going to put all my resources in this particular resource group okay now coming to the topic that we have for today okay what is artificial intelligence what is ai can anyone tell me can you put it in the chat box since it has become so popular it is becoming the need of the hour and etc can you put in the chat box what is your understanding of artificial intelligence yes guys please quickly put it in the chat box let me know what is your understanding of artificial intelligence what is okay anyone else yes guys i'm not going to go to judge you this is a informative session try to answer as much as you can okay it's uh, something that you're going to learn a lot trust me okay so i just i'm just making it more interactive that's the only thing because you it's going to get boring i'm just going to keep on talking and talking right it's not going to make any sense i want your involvement guys okay okay machine learning model what else guys can you all list down things come on anyone any other definition yes absolutely right absolutely right anyone any other definition come on guys nobody is going to judge you for this
Okay. So to put it simply, I'm going to, I mean, give a very simple definition of what is AI. Okay. So AI or artificial intelligence is basically a set of tools. Okay. That is, or are, which are used, okay, which is used for two purposes. Okay. There are two uh, reasons why we use artificial intelligence. One is for inferences. Okay. Inferences, simple meaning in get insight of the data. Okay. To get inside or infer from the data what it is saying okay understand get insights make decisions based on those insights okay and once you get the insight okay use it for predictions so we get we collect historical data right we get historical data right let's say i want to know whether a person will get a loan or not whether, uh, let's say these are the features of the car. Okay, what will be the price of the car? This is the weight, this is the height, this is, uh, let's say, a SUV or a sedan or whatever. What should be the price? So how can I come to know? I need to, first of all, infer the data, get the insight of the data. And once I get that, I can then make predictions. So what is artificial intelligence? To put it simply, it is nothing but a set of tools, software, okay, that helps you to infer data and make predictions. Clear? So now the question is, we understood what is artificial intelligence, but how do I infer the data or how do I predict the outcome or the output? How do I do this? So for this, we have been given something called as AI models. What? So, okay, you are telling me artificial intelligence is a set of tools, okay, which helps me infer the data, make get inside of the data, get helps me do predictions on the data. And you're telling me now, okay, if I have to do these operations, I need something called as AI models. But what is AI models? What is AI models? So to put it simply, AI models is nothing but a representation of real world processes. Now, what do I mean by this? Okay, so if I, I just said, AI models is nothing but a representation of real world processes. So let me put this in a much simpler manner. Okay, so in simple terms, we are basically trying to simulate, okay, we are trying to simulate a real world process using statistics and statistics is nothing but mathematics right so if i am making predictions okay i am using something called as statistics to do that okay let's say i want to find out okay and let me give you an example let's say i uh, I, I, I am in the uh, retailer business, okay? And uh, let's say in the retailer business, I want to find out, okay, based on the area of a house, what is the cost? Okay, let's say uh, I want to find out what is the cost of per square meter of a house, what will be the cost and what will be the yeah what will be its price so for example let's say i have square meter okay we know area is measured the area of a house is measured in this context right and let's say i want to predict the price 
Okay, let's say I want to predict the price and let's say that price I want to predict, let's say depending on or depending in which city the house is. Okay, depending in depending on which city the house is. Okay, let's say I want to do that. So let's say for one second, let me just place it like this. It's a city. Let's say it is taking the city and the area. Okay, and it is determining or it is predicting. Okay, the price depending on or inferring from the square meter and the city. Okay, so let's say the square meter is 100. Okay, and the city is Kerala. Okay, so let's say I want to find out what is the price now. Okay, so let's say I had done a survey and I come across, I'm just giving a rough estimate, guys. I really don't know what is the current price of per square kilometer, I mean, what in meters. Okay, I'm not from the real term background. I'm just giving you an example. Okay, so now what I'm doing, I'm just based on the data, I'm just trying to predict. That's what I just want to show you. How can statistics or mathematics come into picture when we say we are, uh, we are using an AI model? OK, so let's say I have 100 square meter or 100 square feet, whatever you want to take. OK, and the city is Kerala. OK, and the price is, let's say, 1 CR. I don't know the actual price. This is just a hypothetical situation. OK, let's, let's say I have the information of 200 square meters and the Kerala, I mean, the city is again Kerala. OK, and the price is 2 CR. Okay, this is just rough estimate. Now let's say I want to estimate or I want to predict what is the price of 300 square meters. Okay, let's say, and again I take the same city, I say it is Kerala. Let's say and now I want to find out what is this, what is the price of the for 300 square kilometer in Kerala of a house, which is 300 square kilometers, sorry. Okay, so can you tell me what will be the price now? Can you tell me what will be the price? Just, it's so simple, guys, come on. What will be the price now? If 100 is 1 CR, 200 is 2 CR, so how much will be 300? Yes, guys. Okay, what about, I'm looking for answers. Yes, come on, guys. It's 11.30. It's not that I've woken up. I mean, the webinar is at 7 o'clock. Come on, I want responses from you all. Yes, what about the rest? Okay, fine. Your answer is absolutely right. It is 3 CR. How did you come to this answer? I mean, what made you come? Okay, this is the answer should be 3 CR. Don't you think you might have used some logic, some mathematics behind it? Yes. What do you think did you do? You applied some, yeah, that is there, but ultimately it is statistics, right? You applied some maths behind it. You saw, okay, it is 400, it is 1 CR. It is doubling or it is giving you the same value. So what is that? It is nothing but statistics, correct? So that is what AI model is. So AI model, okay, whether whatever you do, behind it, whatever is functioning is nothing but your AI model. Okay, so in simple terms, AI model, model is something that helps you to, you know, use statistics and predict and infer your data. Clear? So this is what is artificial intelligence. And if I want to use artificial intelligence, I can do that through the AI models. Clear? So it is a software that imitates human behaviors, capabilities. That is also another definition for artificial intelligence that you can use. Okay, it's a software that 
imitates human behavior he imitates human behavior and capabilities clear so now this is not just that he is ai okay ai is a very broad concept okay it has it's just not something that is limited to uh, okay statistics and all of that there is lots of things inside ai right. okay and there are certain what we call it as workloads within ai okay now let's just see the different workloads within ai and i'm pretty sure you all even know about it okay the very first one is machine learning okay can you all tell me what is machine learning have you all i'm pretty sure most of you all have used machine learning and etc right so machine learning is nothing but to put it simply it is something that you teach a computer okay how to make predictions and draw conclusions simple okay you just say okay you just teach the computer to make predictions and draw conclusions let's say i want i'm working in a bank okay and there is a customer who has come Okay, who wants a loan? Okay, and I want to predict whether this customer will get loan or not. How do I do that? Okay, then I will create a computer system. Okay, wherein I will feed the character. I mean, I feed the features. Okay, inside that model because I have trained that computer, I have taught it. Okay, like how I like when we do trainings, I teach people. Okay, this is how the software, this is how the technology has to be used. You can use it this this at the at these these places. Okay, and what they do, then they start using it in their daily life. I mean, in their work, right? So similarly, if I want to do that to a computer, I tell it, I teach it first. Okay, this is the data that is there, is the historical data. Okay, these are the past records of people who have got loan or not, or not have got loan. Okay, what it will do, it will just infer from that data. Uh, okay, and based on the teaching it has received from me, it will make predictions and it will give you a conclusion whether you will get the day, get a loan or not. Then the second workload in AI. Is the computer vision? Sorry, is the computer vision? So, what is a computer vision? So, let's say I want to, you know, predict through images. I want to predict through videos. I want to predict through cameras and etc. Something from images or videos. Okay, that I can do. Through the computer vision, so computer vision is again AI, but it helps you. Okay, let's say I have an image, and I want to see which car, which car is this. I want, I want to predict from the image what car is this. Or let's say I have given it a fruit. Okay, and I want to predict which fruit it is, whether it's an apple, an orange, or banana, etc. Okay, uh, if I want to determine that, I can use the computer vision so this helps you to interpret images videos okay then the third workload that is there is called as the natural language processing or short form is nlp correct so NLP, okay, let's say like now what we are going to see, okay, it's nothing but examples of NLPs that we are going to see, okay, it's nothing but which translates, interprets whatever you have written, analyzes whatever you have written, okay, 
in a language. So let's say I told you I want to interpret. OK, let's say I've given it a, a, a review document. OK, I've given it a set of reviews. I want to find out whether the review is positive or negative, or I want to translate from one language to another language. OK, so whatever translation services, speech services, etc. that are there, they are a part of the NLP. So NLP helps you in interpreting the written or the spoken languages and it responds in that kind then. OK, so let's say you want you've given it uh, input of English language and you want it to be translated into French. OK, then NLP is the one that is responsible for it. OK, so that is what NLP does interprets. Written. Or spoken. Language and response. In time, OK, in that manner itself. OK, then the fourth workload. Is the document intelligence. Very, very important document intelligence. OK, so in case you have forms or documents that you want to analyze, you want to manage, OK, or you want to do, um, you know, based on. Um, yeah, all those. Analysis of forms OK, or receipts that you get or you want to analyze a document in a PDF or whatever format it is. OK, you can use the document intelligence. OK, so this is used, used for dealing. Forms and documents. OK, then the fifth workload that is there you have is the knowledge. Mining. You. You have the knowledge mining. So what is knowledge mining? OK, so in case you want to search for anything, OK, from a knowledge store or something, you want to extract information. OK, you can use the knowledge mining workload of AI. OK, so it helps you to extract. Information. OK, or search for information, OK, or create a searchable like somebody has entered or browsing is based on some browsing history or something. OK, they want to search. You can just kind of create a knowledge store for it and they can then search and extract information from that. OK, then the last and the newly introduced workload is the generative AI. OK. Which we all know it is called as Gen AI, and all the NLPs, Image, Code, and etc. Chat GPT, DAL E, Whisper, all those things that you have, LLMs, okay, they are nothing but a part of the Gen AI, okay. So this is like a new workload that has come into picture, okay. So this is what is basically. AI, OK, let me just go to a presentation very quickly and just show it to you all. OK. OK, so we are just doing an overview, quick overview of this. So we saw what is artificial intelligence, correct? Then we looked at the common workloads that are there. Then, of course, we all know with great power comes great responsibility. So you have to be very, very careful while using this AI, okay, because there are lots and lots of risks involved, correct? You need to be fair, okay? You need to be, you need to keep your data secured, okay? Because we know it can bring in or 
it has a lot of challenges in in it then transparency is something that is critical accountability who is accountable for all of this in case there is a breach there is some issue okay you need to be very responsible and then for that okay there is something called as responsible ai okay then of course i'm not just going, i'm not going to you know talk about this much okay just what is machine learning okay so what we will do is let me just show you a quick demo on machine learning first on azure okay uh, we will see how to train a model a simple model i'm going to uh, create a pipeline okay of um, how to create a model so let's just go and do that let me just navigate to portal dot is your okay and i'm going to just log in So when you work with machine learning, okay, on Azure, you have the Azure Machine Learning Studio. It is a tool that is responsible for training model, deploying models. Okay, so it's a again a pass service that is there. So let's see how to create one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and search for it over here. Okay, so you can just say Azure Machine Learning. The first thing that you see, and if you click on this, I have one already created. So I'm just going to show you how to create one. Very easy it is. So you just go and say new workspace. And now if you see here, the first thing, like I said, you need is a resource group. So resource group, like I said, is nothing but a logical container. Okay, so I'm just going to go and create a new one. So I'm going to say webinar. Click on OK. So whatever demos I will do here, I am going to store it or I'm going to put it into this container, just changing the region. OK. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a name. So I'll just say webinar workspace. And I'm just going to say review plus create. It's very easy. So, you know, I didn't have to do any much configuration at the back end. Okay. It automatically is doing that. I just configured in what region I want, what name I want, and that's it. Okay. It's that easy. So, I'll just go and say create. It will take some time. <clears throat> so it has created. I'm going to go to the resource. 
and we are going to launch a machine learning studio. So in machine learning, Azure machine learning, there are three ways in which you can deploy models or train models. OK, the first is using the Python SDK. So you need to know Python. OK, and trust me, like uh, in AI also, if you know Python, it is very, very uh, crucial. I mean, you can use other language. It's not that there is no API for that. OK, but Python is something that I think is more versatile compared to other languages and more easy to implement. OK, and I'm talking from personal experience that I have up till now in data or AI that I have trained. I have seen that Python is something that is easy to learn and something that is you know, easy to grasp. So you can, you know, learn that language. You can create models, deploy models, train models on your own. OK, so one way is using the Python SDK, which is nothing but the notebook. So if you're familiar with Jupyter Notebook, OK, you can use this particular uh, service. Then you have uh, the auto ML. OK, let's say you don't know the machine. I mean, you don't know how to use Py or you don't know how to write Python code. OK, and you want to still you know, create a model and uh, train a model and deploy a model. OK, you can still do that uh, by using auto ML. All you have to do is just mention which kind of model you want, what kind of data and everything. Just mention that. OK, and you can like get the uh, model train. You will get a model automatically created it will that is why the name automated ml okay so you don't have to do any coding in it in order to work with it okay then the last one is the designer so what is the designer basically it is nothing but um a drag and drop kind of a option that is there okay it is uh, uh like you get a canvas a page a blank page and inside that you can just drag and drop things and you can you you know train a model to for that. Okay, so that's what all these three things are. So we are just going to see how to work with a designer. So a designer is very very easy to use, and anyone who is not familiar with the coding background doesn't have knowledge of Python, then definitely use designer. So I'm just going to go create a new pipeline. I'll just show you an existing listing because we are running out of time. I need to give you all a break as well. So I'll just show you all, explain how it is done, okay, with my existing pipeline that is there. So I'll just go back to this workspace. Launch the studio. And I'm going to go to designer. So I already have some pipelines created over here. So I'm just going to click on this. So this is how a pipeline looks like. OK, it's very easy to create. You have something called as activities over your components. Sorry, not activities. OK. So here you have some sample data already available with you. OK, like you want the uh, you want the car price, the automobile price data. So you already have. So you just have to drag that OK onto the canvas that is there over here on the right hand side. Then decide what you want to do transformations, what kind of transformations you want to apply. OK, which row you want to remove, whether you want to do feature selection, feature engineering, what kind of things you want to do. Clean the data, remove duplicates, drop duplicates, change column names. OK, so for that, you have a component called as data transformations. So you can see there are multiple ways in which you can do. OK, so you can see you can remove the missing values. OK, you have to just put it and connect the two. Uh, connect the two 
components using if you see you just have to i just show it to you over here you just have to click on this and drag it till here and this is how they get connected to each other okay so you can do uh, you just have to connect them like this so in that way you have to just sequence your components and you can uh, train a model okay once you have done transformation and all of that okay you want to split the data correct you would like to split the data so if you scroll over here you have the option of splitting the data so we know that 70 30 is the ratio right 70 is for training 30 is for testing correct so that is how you train the model so if you see you can just apply transformations and you can split the data so here it is after i have kind of trained the model and etc that is why you can't see the split that is there okay you can even use Morty if you know how to use it. So it's just, you have to drag it and, you know, you have to just do basic configurations and you can easily do that. You can remove duplicate columns, select columns that you want, remove the columns that you don't want. Okay. Once this is done, you can even normalize the data. Okay. If you know, I'm not going to go into much depth of that, but you can normalize the data. Okay, so this is what you learn in simple, uh, this is simple that is there. Okay, so if you want to, you know, actually work in this, you know, train models, deploy models, uh, Microsoft has a certification called as DP100. And we do train on DP100, sorry. DP100, it is called as Microsoft Azure. Certified data science. Okay. This is data science. This is not related to uh, artificial intelligence AI. This is basically machine learning only. Okay. So, in case in the future, you know, you have done AI, you have done one of the fundamentals. So, AZ900 is something that is recommended. Okay. Without which you can't use Azure. You can't do AI900. You can't do uh, A AI120. Uh, yeah, AI 102, sorry. Okay, you can't do DP 100, all those certifications that are there. So it is highly recommended that you do at least AZ 900 and then do AI 900 and then you can go to DP 100 or, or AI 102. Okay, so this is about machine learning that is there. So this is how you can create once you have done the transformations. You can go and apply the machine learning algorithms. Okay, so if you see here, machine learning algorithms, you have all the machine learning algorithms, okay, that are there. You just have to drag them and put it into the canvas. Okay, so initially, what would you do? You would use two algorithms, right? If it's a regression model, you would normally go with linear regression or you would go with uh, uh, decision tree, uh, sorry, random forest, decision tree, or all of those uh, regression models that are there. And if it's a, like you want a, a, like a classification, then you would go with logistic regression, or you would go with random forest classifier and all of those models, right? You can even do clustering. You have K means if it's an unsupervised model, okay? We know we use clustering, okay? So you can even use that. And you can just compare the two models, score them, okay? Use the scoring and evaluation field. So if you see here, okay, you have to use the scoring and the evaluation, which will help you, give you the score. So in terms of regression, you have the RMSC, you have R2 score, okay? And in terms of classification, you have F1, precision, accuracy, right? All those confusion matrix, all of those things are there, right, in terms of performance, if you want to evaluate, okay, you can do that using the model scoring and evaluation that is there. So these are there, then let's say, you know, there are transformations that you, uh, I mean, you, it's not being fulfilled with these components, you need something more, you can definitely write a Python script or a R script. So if you see, you have two options. You can even create a, if you know Python language, you can create 
a model in using python language okay and you can just drag that over here on this canvas and you can run it okay otherwise you can just write a small simple python script let's say you want to do some extra transformation extra cleaning okay but it's that component is not available in the list of components over here okay that then you can write a python script but of course you would need to know python for that okay so this is also possible over here okay and n number of things which i will not go you can even do feature selection okay you have these two options for feature selection as of now over here you just have to drag them and put it and connect create a pipeline okay for first this has to be done second this has to be done third that has to be done and you are sorted okay so this was machine learning okay sadly i couldn't show you much about the demo okay but this is how you create a workspace and if you want to know more about this i would highly recommend you doing this certification okay dp100 which is available for data science okay so let's do one thing now uh, let's take a break okay of uh, around 10 minutes will that do so we'll just take, take a quick 10 minute break and then once we come back we will move our focus to uh, the ai models so we'll just do a quick demo of translate text and translate speech okay so let me just start the timer So see you after ten minutes.
Uh, hi guys, Chaitali this side again. Uh, when you all are back from the break, please put back in the chat box so I can go ahead and explain you how to get the batch activated for AI 900. I will request all the participants when you are back from the break, please put back in the chat box so I can explain you all how to get the batch activated for AI 900. Uh, students are requested to drop the uh, back in the chat box so, so I can explain you all how to get AI 900 batch activated. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, in this batch, you will get study material as well as the participation certificate. Certification in it. So quickly put back in the chat box if you all are there. Okay, so I'll tell you all how to get the batch activated. Just a minute. So as I have mentioned the steps and the URL for the batch in the chat box, simply you have to do the things that uh, you have to get the batch activated with the following steps that are you have to go on Microsoft Learn first. Uh, that uh, After that, you have to create your account on Microsoft Learn. The link has been mentioned for Microsoft Learn with the steps. So simply you have to click on Microsoft Learn uh, link and you have to create your profile. If you have a profile on Microsoft Learn, uh, no need to create the other 
but if you don't have a profile created on Microsoft Learn, please create one. After that, uh, once you create your profile, uh, you will get an URL in the chat box with the steps. By the end of the steps, you will get one URL. You have to copy that URL and open it in new tab. Once you open the URL in new tab, you will get an option uh, of redeem button. You just have to simply click on that button and get the batch activated. Here I have mentioned the QR code for the batch. You can scan and go and get the batch activated as well. For that, you have to first get your Microsoft Learn account created. So guys, make sure you follow the steps and get the batch activated. Also, uh, once you create your profile and get the batch activated, here under the profile, you will see an option as achievements. As you can see on my screen, uh, there is this screenshot which mentioned achievements. Uh, same, it will show, uh, the options will show in your profile. Under the achievements, you have to go in badges and courses. After that, once you click on the course, you will get the badge uh, activated as name on fundamental of AI as your. And there you will get a drop down. Uh, you can say icons uh, to share the, share your badge on different of our LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter and other. So you can share your certification on your LinkedIn, Twitter and Facebook profiles. So make sure you get the uh, badge activated and you can share that badge on your profiles. Also, if you want to print the badge, here you can see uh, besides the share button, you will get a print option. Once you click on that option, you will get a certification like this mentioned with your name and has successfully completed the uh, participation in the webinar with the title mention and the date. So guys, make sure you follow the steps and get the badge activated. Also, if you are facing any problem while the redemption of the badge, or if you want to know more about the badge, how to get the badge activated, whatever the things is, uh, please let me know in the chat box so I can help you out with the same. Uh, now I will like to again hand over the mic to uh, speaker Mansi so she can continue the session. Thank you. Yeah, thank you Chaitali and everyone please go activate this badge. It is like a certificate that you have attended this webinar and it's very important. Like, I mean, it adds a lot of value. Okay, you can share it like Chaitali said on your LinkedIn profile as well so please go ahead and do share the screenshots in the chat box so that we come to know you have redeemed the badge and uh you have uh yeah you can then share it on linkedin so going ahead now what we are going to do is we are going to see the translation services okay i told you all that uh we are going to see how to translate uh, text from like let's i let's say i give it a text and from that text, it has to convert it to, uh, let's say I've given it a French language and it has to convert it to English. So it has to translate to English, sorry. Okay, so let's see how we can do that using the Azure AI models. Okay, so I'm just sharing my screen. So in case you want to ever work with Azure AI, okay, earlier the name of Azure AI services was called Cognitive Services, but since July 2023, okay, they have stopped calling Cognitive Services and now it has become Azure AI service. So you can just come here and search for it, Azure AI. So the very first thing that you see, you have to use that, okay. And now if you see over here, you have multiple AI services listed for you. Okay. The very first thing you have open AI, you have AI search for 
uh, uh, knowledge store that I talked about, computer vision for analyzing your um, images, videos, okay? Then face API if you want to do face recognition, okay? Speed service, which we are going to see. Then language service in case you want to analyze any text, okay? Like NLP, like I talked about, uh, let's say sentiment analysis if you want to do. Okay, let's say you've got a review and you want to know whether the review is positive or negative. You can use the language service. Then you have the translator service, which we are going to see now. Then document, bot, anomaly detection, and etc. N number of models, if you see, have are present over here. So let's go ahead and create a simple translator service. So I'm going to go here and create one. Click on create. I'm going to use the same resource group that I have created so that it is easy for me to delete everything towards the end. Here I'm going to go with East US because it is relatively cheaper. So here I'm going to say translate text. Let's see if it accepts. I doubt it has to be unique. Okay, the naming has to be unique. And you can go with the free here. Okay, we are going to go with the free this thing. So today's date is 18, so I'll just add one eight. Let's see if it is accepting. Okay, it has accepted. Okay, rest, you don't need to know. Okay, so simple, very easy to create. Just go ahead and click on review plus create. So it will do a quick validation. It will see whether you are uh, can create a translator service or not. Yes, I can. So now I can go ahead and create one. Till the time this is being created, I have, I want to show you all. I have these reviews over here, five reviews that are there. Okay, so I'll just open one review and show it to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass one of these reviews. Okay, so you know, if you see review one, this is in English, correct? Then you have review two, which is again in English. And you have review three, which is again in English, if you see. And you have review four, again English. And then you have review five, which doesn't look English. Okay, it looks probably French. Okay, so what we are going to do is we are going to pass these files. Okay, and wherever the review is not English, Okay, we are going to tell the translator service, please translate it for me to English. Okay, so this is what we are going to do. And for that, I am going to open, a, uh, I have already opened a command prompt. Okay, and now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to open a Visual Studio code where I'm going to write a simple Python code, very easy. But just before we write the Python code, I just want to show you all two things. Uh, just show you all something. So I'm going to go to the resource. So this is my translate service. Okay. And in translate and service, we have something called as keys and endpoint. Okay. So what, why we need this? Because we are going, we are using Python API. We are using the Python language, right? So we need to connect that a Python or the Visual Studio Code with this translation translator service that we have created. Okay. And in order to do that, okay, we need the keys and the endpoint that is there. Okay. So we have the endpoint, okay, which is this API cognitive that is there. And we have the keys and we are going to use the region as well. So let me go ahead and open uh, Visual Studio Code. So here, if you see, I already have the reviews, okay, that I just showed you. Okay, we have it here. So what I'm going to go, I'm going to go ahead and create a Python file. Okay, so I'm just going to right click, or you can just do this. But it is going to create in reviews. I want to create here. Okay, so you just click on this, and what I'm going to do is, I rather do one thing. The file. I'm going to call this as translate text. 
dot py. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is first I'm going to do uh, I'm going to get the endpoint and the keys and the region. Okay, I'm going to connect to that first. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable with that. So I'm just going to say cognitive underscore endpoint. Just a different name is equal to. So here I'm going to copy the endpoint and paste it. So I'm going to go back to my translator service. Copy this and come here. Okay. Then I'm going to mention the region. Okay. So I'm going to create a region. Again, I'll just go simply over here and I'll just click on this copy and I can copy it. And I'm going to create a key key I want. Okay. And again, I'm going to copy it. So here you have two keys. You can use any one of them. Okay. It's not necessary to use only key one or key two. You can use any one. Okay. It's just uh, if one key you have given it to someone and you want to share uh, with somebody else this access. Okay. So you have another key. So that is why there is a key that is there, but otherwise they are the same. Okay. And I'm just going to paste that. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the files, these folders, sorry. Okay. One by one. And inside that, I'm going to kind of, first of all, I'm going to do a detect. Okay. And then I'm going to just try and translate. Okay. Whatever is there. So first it has to detect the language that is there. Okay. Whether it's English, French, German, Spanish, whatever language is there, it has to detect that first. Okay. So what I'm going to do uh, before I open the folder, I want to do necessary imports. I'm going to go with a OS library and I'm going to use import requests. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this reviews folder that is there to a variable. So I'm going to call it review underscore folder, which is equal to reviews. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is inside this folder, I'm going to take the file name, one one file I'm going to take. I'm going to access one one file and try and detect its uh, language. OK, so this is what I'm going to do. So for that, I need to first of all list down the file names. How do I do that? So I will write a for loop. So I'll say for file underscore name in OS because I'm using the OS directory list DIR. OK, and I'm going to pass the review folder. Over here. And once this is done, I am going to say text. I'm going to open the file. OK, so I'm going to use the open method that is there. Inside the open method, now I'm going to give it a path. I'm going to give like we know like right in the whenever we store a folder like or when we store a file inside a folder right what do we how do we give the path so here it is what reviews slash review one right it is like this right if you see review one dot txt so I want, this is what this is my path so I'm going to give this path and I'm going to open that path okay and I'm going to try and detect that particular files language. OK, so if I have to open, I'm going to use the OS module dot paths. OK, and inside that I'm going to give the path, which is nothing but reviews review folder. Comma file name. And comma here, I'm going to give it an encoding technique, which is nothing but commonly used one is the UTF-8. OK. And once this is done, I'm going to read this. OK, so I'm using the read method. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to print this. I'm going to say text. And now along with this, because I want to detect the language that is there. Okay. 
I need to give it an additional endpoint. Okay, to the endpoint that I have. So now, as of now, it is just doing. It is just a translator service that is created. But I wanted to do something additional, right? I wanted to first of all detect the language that is there. So how do I do that? Okay, so I need to give it an endpoint of detect. Telling okay, you know, you have to detect the value first. Okay, and then you have to. Uh, Analyze the or detect the language of the review or the files that are there. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to say URL, which is equal to the cognitive endpoint that I have created. And like I said, I want to give it an additional endpoint that is of detect. So what I'll do is I'll just say plus for the this thing, sorry, slash detect. Okay. And here, along with that, I'm going to give some additional parameters. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to tell it. Okay, please use this um, as the version API version. Give it a header. Give it a body to my request that I'm giving. But so if I say slash detect the moment I send this request, okay, what kind of body and header it should uh, should I mean use? And once that is that request has been sent. What kind of response do I get? Okay, uh, is what I am going to basically mention over here. Okay, so let's see how we can do that. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, so I'm going to give it additional parameters. So I'll just say COG params or par parameters that are there that is equal to here. I'm going to give it a dictionary. Okay. So I'm going to say, a, sorry, it's a JSON format. So I'm going to say API hyphen version. Okay. And I'm going to give it a version of 3.0. Okay. This is done. Now I'm going to give it a header and a body that is going to be there. So I'll just say cog headers, which is equal to. So here I'm going to pass the key, the region, and the content type, okay? Because if you've seen a HTTP header or something, so we generally pass the key and all the region and additional information that is there, correct? So that's what I am doing over here, okay? So here I'm going to, we need to mention a key value pair, which is a JSON format. So here I'm going to say OCP hyphen. This is the language, I mean, you have to use. This is something uh, I haven't done. Okay, it is a Python language that is there. So I'm going to say cognitive key, comma. I'm going to mention the region. So OCP hyphen API M hyphen subscription hyphen region. Okay, and to that, I'm going to give the region that I have mentioned above. And finally, the content type, which is nothing but a JSON. Right? It is like we normally give that application slash JSON. So that's what I'm doing over here. Whenever we want a RESTful kind of a service, and we know when we are giving REST APIs, the output is going to be in the JSON format. Right, so this is what I am doing, and now I'm giving it a body. So I'm just going to say body, and I'm going to create a list of dictionaries. So what it will do, it will do text, colon text. And now I'm going to create a request and a response. OK, so once you give this response a request, OK, you're re requesting to detect the language, right? you want a response. And that response should be in the JSON format, correct? So how do we do that? So I'm going to say request is equal to request dot post because we are posting. OK, it's a post method. We are giving all these parameters that we have created. OK, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to pass the URL. Then to parameters, which is parents. 
I'm going to pass the param, the cognitive params that we have created. Then headers, I'm going to pass the header that we have created. And to the body, okay, which is JSON, I'm going to pass the body because this is how I want the output to be represented. Okay. And once this is done, we are going to create a response. So this is my request. So what it will do, it will first of all review these folders, detect the language in what version, this version. This is going to take which service it is going to use. I mentioned that over here. And in what format I want it to be responding. This is what I have mentioned. Clear? So now I want to give it a response. It has to give me a response, right? It has, okay, this is English language. This is French language. What kind of detection it has done? It has to give me a response, correct? So that's what I'm doing. So I'll say response, which is equal to request. Dot JSON. Okay, so this will JSONify the output and it will give it to you. Clear? So now I need to find out and you print the response. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it into another variable because I want to represent it in a much better way. So I'm going to say language detected is equal to response. So since it's a list, if you see here, it's kind of like a list. OK, but I want the output to be OK in the form of a dictionary, which is key value pair. So what I will do is I will just say zero as of now. OK. and then I'll just say print. Uh, let's say I do something like slash n because I want it on a new line. Language detected. Comma. Language detected. OK, so let me just save this. OK, and now let's see what output do we get. OK, so I'm going to run this over here. So I'm going to call it Python translate text dot py and let's see. Okay, one second. OS has not been okay. It has some mistake. What I can do is let me first print the file name and see. And I just wanted to look better. Okay, so fine. This call name. Save it. Oh yeah, I forgot one more thing. You have to join it to the paths. So you have to use this method as well. Okay, so now I think it will work. So I'll just... Yeah. So if you see here, it has detected the language. So if you see, this is what it has detected. But as of now, it is giving me other values also. So if you see the last file that is there, which is review five, and we, we had seen this when I opened the file in front of you, right? We were getting, this is what it was. It was a French language, rest were all English. So if you see E-N-E-N, -E -N, so it is doing a great job at detecting, right? It is doing the detection absolutely right. Now let's say I want to translate this language, or let's say I'll, re I'll just make it in a better way. Let's represent this in a better way. So here, what I will do is I'll just add another this thing. I'll just say I want the language key. Okay. I just want the values of language. Okay. So now if I come here, I'll do a CLS. Okay. So what it is doing, it is just giving me the language. Okay. English, English. If you see here. This is what it is doing. So it is detecting the language absolutely fine, right? So now let's see 
how can we translate the file? So let's say I want it to translate a file, okay, where the language is not English. Okay, let's say it is some other language and I want it to translate it, translate that particular file, which means in our case, review file, which is in French language to English. So let's see how we can do that over here. It's very easy, similar to detect itself. Just additional uh, things we need to do. We just need to apply a if condition. Okay, so I'll just say if language detected, okay, is not equal to EN. Okay, so here I just need to put it in quotes because it's a string format, right? And now what I need to do is I just need to upgrade the URL. Here we were just doing a detect. If you see here in this URL, right? I was using the endpoint of my translator service and I was just saying, please detect. But now I don't want it to detect, I want it to translate. Okay, so now instead of detect, what we will do, we will use translate. So I'll just say URL. Okay, again, I'm using that, I'll override it. I'll just copy this URL. You can even use the endpoint, just you can use this also directly if you want. And to this, now I'm going to say slash translate. Okay, so wherever the language is not English, it is going to translate. Okay, and give me the output. Okay, so here again, what I'm going to do here now, I need to mention. That okay, from which language have you translated it? So, like, let's say it is Spanish. So, you have to mention okay, from Spanish language, I have translated to English language. Okay, so I need to mention that I need to give it additional parameters, right? So, how do I do that? Okay, so I'm just going to say call again. I'm going to use the parameters and I'll just say equal to, and here I'll say API version again. And I'll just say 3.0, comma. I'll say um, I want it to detect the language from the language detected. It has to change or can translate to English. So I need to mention from okay language detected, okay, comma to. Okay, we need to say to which language. So let's say English. I wanted to make it to English. So I'm going to put it in this format. Okay. Now again, headers and everything is going to remain the same. So I'm just going to copy these two things. Just keep in mind they are inside the if condition. Okay, you have to be very careful with that. So here, guys, you need to know Python language in order to work with it, and it's very easy to learn. It's no, not rocket science, okay? So yeah, once this is done, again, the same thing I'm going to do. But here, instead of language detected, I'm going to use translated language. Just give proper indentations. Okay, request URL, this is fine. Okay, this is also fine. So here, now what I'll do, I'll just take control C. See, um, i just remove this. Paste it and I'll say translated review. Okay. We'll go with translated review. And here I am going to uh, we'll do one thing. I'll just remove this. We'll do we'll do it in a different way this time. Okay, I'll keep this 
And here I will just see. Print. Okay, response. Again, the same logic. Okay, the zero value. I mean, it's a list. So we are taking the zeroth element. Okay, then I'm going to say. Just. We are going to before that, what I can do is. I'll take the response. I'll just show you all one thing before that. I'll take the response in on another thing. Okay. So I'll just say translated review, which is equal to response zero. Okay. And let me just print this first. How we did for uh, language detected. So let me just print that first. So I just comment this first. To save it, I'll come here. I'll run the Python code. Okay, it is giving me an error. I want to see if oh okay 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 my bad my bad I didn't have to give quotes so it's that is why it's not going to work I guess so let me just try again. Yeah, so it is doing a translation. So if you see here, because the first four files were, you know, uh, in English, so of course they are going to be bypassed. It's not matching the condition. But if you see the fifth one, okay, it is kind of detected French language. And here, if you see, it is giving me a translation, but it is giving me a translation in this format. I don't want it. I want it to be represented in a much better way. Okay, so let's see how we can do that. So I will, for one thing, I'll comment this. I will say, okay, print this. And I'll say print. And also comment this. Okay. Just a new way of representing. That's it. I'll just say response zero. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this translation because it's in a dictionary. Okay, it's a key value. So I'm just going to mention the uh, key that is translation. Okay, and I'm going to take the zeroth place. So if you see again here, it is a list. Okay, it is again a Python list. So from that list, I again want a key. I don't want the entire this thing. So I'll just say, okay, I want text. Okay, from this list that is there. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, okay, take translations. I think it is translations, correct? Take translations. And from the translation, which is again a lit, take the zero element, the zeroth element. And from the zeroth element, please take the text key that is there. So the moment I save this, and now if I go back, CLS, run the code. So the first four bypass. And now if you see here, you're getting a translated view. So you're getting a translated. So it is French. Okay, this is the review. And now it has translated the French language to English language. You can do it in any language. You just have to change the two from here. Okay, just make it ES or uh, DE for German or Hindi, HI, okay, whatever you want, you can do that over here. So it's a very simple uh, tran text translation that we have done, okay? So similar to this, we can even do one more translation, okay? That is a speech translation. So very quickly, let me just show you all how to do a speech translation. So I'm going back to my Azure portal. I'm going back. Okay, I'm going to the Azure AI services. 
And in Azure AI service, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create a speech service. Okay. So here I have already written the code for speech service because in case we run out of time. Okay. So I'm just going to run that uh, code. I'm just going to change the endpoints because it's a new service that I'm creating. So I'm going to change the endpoints. That's it. And I'll just explain and run. I'll just run through the code for you all. Okay. Just give me a minute. So I've already written the code. I'm just going to copy that code. And I'll just come here. And create a new file. I'll just say translate. Page.py. And I'll just paste it. Okay, I'll I'll explain the code. Don't worry. Let me just save it. But before that, let's see how to create a speech service. So I'm coming over here. Going to speech service. Saying create one. Very much similar to your uh, translation service. Select the same resource group, same region. Give it a name. So I'll say translate to. Okay, translate speech. Let's see, I don't think so. It will accept it. I'll go with the default one, three tier. Okay, I'll give this also 18. Let's see if it's taking the name. Okay, it has accepted. Let's go ahead and create this. I'm going to say create. Okay, so the resource has been created. Let's go to the resource. Again, here you're going to get the keys and endpoint. So we are going to use that itself. And I'm going to replace it with the one I have already. Okay, so I'll just first of all take the endpoint. Yeah, I'll just replace it. It's almost going to be the same. There is not much difference, but still, I will, because we have created a new service, so I'm just going to replace. Just going to replace it. The region is the same. The key, I'm going to copy it. Because the keys are going to be different, they might not be the same. Okay. And in order to work with speech, okay, we need to install a library that is Azure Cognitive Services dot speech, okay, which will enable us to, you know, um, do that translation. So I will, you know, uh, speak in one language and it will do the translation according to what I want. So let's say here what I have done, I have given it. Uh, so I'm going to use this library or module that is there. I have given my endpoint, my region, my key, and I am invoking. Okay, I am. It's a class basically. Okay, it's a Python class that has been creating. So I'm invoking or I'm waking up that class through this particular command that is there. Okay, so this is the class and translation and speech translation config is nothing but the uh, methods inside that class. So I'm just invoking that and I am passing these parameters into it. Okay. And once this is done, I'm saying, okay, please, the language that I'm going to speak or I'm going to talk on, okay, it's going to be in English and take it to be English, which is from the United States. Okay. Take my accent to be of United States. It's going to be English. Okay. It can be UK also, whatever. You can change that. You can even make it India if you want. Okay. Then 
what kind of languages do I want? What kind of languages am I targeting to be translated into? OK, so I'm passing that configuration. And if I have to do that, there is a method called as add target. OK, and it's just going to uh, print that. OK, this has been, you know, invoked. It is ready to use. You can start your speech translation that is there. So that is why I have mentioned this over here. And then again, what we are doing, we are creating a configuration for speech. OK, we are connecting to the speech service. So this is for translation and this is for speech that I will talk. OK, so that I am doing. And once it has taken the speech, OK, I need to give it a target language. OK, I say like I am going to speak in English. OK, I want it to convert to let's say French or Spanish or to Hindi. So if you see here, that is why I have mentioned these targeted um, languages. So it will only target those languages. Apart from that, it will not. But if you want more, you can definitely add those languages over here. That's not a problem. OK, and apart from that, now what I'm doing, I'm giving it a menu. OK, I'm giving it a menu driven approach. I'm saying, OK, please um give these options to the user okay in what language does he or she want it to be translated you ask the user and he or she will enter so like if i want it in french i will enter fr okay if i wanted it in spanish he or she will enter es if you wanted it in hindi you can add the hi and if you don't want any of these languages you want to quit okay this service OK, you can just press any other letters apart from these. OK, and you can exit the program. So what did we do since I have I have put in a condition I have said. Till the time the user, so it's like an infinite loop I have. I am running over here. OK, so till the time the user does not say quit. Ask the user in what language do you want the speech that you have just, you know, you've just spoken to be translated in either French, in uh, French, Hindi or Spanish. OK, now what I'm going to do once that is done. OK, I am saying. OK, whatever language, whatever target language the user has selected. OK, you take that and take the audio that it has taken. And from where do you take the audio? You take it from the microphone of the speaker. OK, so what I've done, I am using the default microphone of my system. OK, so that is why there is a parameter. So this is the class and this is the method. And inside the method, there is a parameter that is called as use default uh, underscore microphone. And if I set that to be true, so it will use my microphone, my laptop's microphone and take the speech that I have just uh, that I'm going to, uh, I mean, whatever it will has to use in order to, or, I mean, the audio that it has to take. Okay. And once that has taken, it will pass it to the translation. It will tra it will identify the translation. Will it take the accent? Okay. It is English. Identify that. Okay. And then once you have done it, okay, it will take the target value. Okay. Pass it to the translation. Okay. And it will say, OK, you have to whatever is the audio, you have to translate it to this target value that is there. OK, once it has been set to that, then it will say, OK, please speak. And once you speak, it will recognize from this. So that is why there is a recognition uh, uh, method. OK, once you do that, so it's called recognize underscore once underscore async. So you don't have to know about it. OK, just this is the method that it will use. OK, and once you have you have, you know, you speak. OK, in English, OK, it will start translating and it will give you. So whatever target value you have selected, it will take that target value, translate it and give you the output. So in now when it is giving you the output. So by default in uh, there is certain like in Alexa or in Google, there are certain, you know, there is a set voice that comes right the 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 lady that is speaking is the same i mean it's not something different it is the alexa has a unique voice to her right so similarly here 
if i want to you know uh, there are some default values like if it's a french uh, translation that i'm asking for so there is somebody called as henry neural whose in whose voice i will hear whatever i have spoken but in french language similarly for um, spanish there is elvira Okay, she's a lady. You can even change. Okay, whatever it is, you have to go. You'll have to just go and search for that. Okay, uh, you are taking those key value pairs dictionary. Okay, and once that is there, it will. Once you have the trans, whatever translate target language you have set, it will change it to that voice. Okay, it will probably Henry or Elvira or Madhur's. Okay, and in that language, it that. I mean, you can just see. Normally, you would just see if you didn't have this. Okay, if you didn't have this particular um, voices, if you hadn't mentioned, you wouldn't have been able to hear the translation. Okay, if I want to hear the translation, okay, I need to pass these voices. Otherwise, you can get it in the form of text. Okay, so you will see this will just print it in the form of text. But if you want to hear it, that literally it has been translated or not. You need to use the voices that is there. Okay. So now moving ahead, let me just run this code. Okay. I'll come here. Let me do a CLS. Now I'll say Python translate speech dot py and I'll enter. So I'll just say I want it in Spanish. Okay. And now I'll speak. Hello, we are in India. So, so guys, could you hear? Yes, guys, could you hear the voice? I don't know if it was there or not. Could you hear the voice, guys? I spoke that we are in India. Like, hello, okay, we are in India and they kind of translate it. So if you see, it is giving me in the form of text. And then we could hear Elvira also speak. So I'll run this program again. Okay. This time I'll go with Hindi. Let's say I want it to be translated in Hindi. Okay. Hello, we are in India. So you could see, we could translate it and we could even hear the voice. Okay. And Madhur's voice, we could hear. Okay. And he translated it as for in Hindi. Right. So you can add any number of languages you can mention. Okay. This is simple application that we have seen. Okay. There is lots to learn. This is just the beginning. Okay. And um, lot many things. So this is just the start of it. You have phase. APIs, you have document, you have the document intelligence, you have the knowledge store, all of those things, models are also available. Okay. And you can use them. So just I wanted to show a small, simple demo of how you can translate and text and speech. Okay. So let me just give you an overview of where you can go and study. Okay. Uh, Microsoft has its own official documentation website that is called as learn.microsoft.com. Okay. So if you come here and if you search in credentials, I will share this link. And I think my sir has also uh, posted a couple of links. Okay. Uh, my own Prakash sir has already uh, uh, shared the link for it. I'll also do that. Again, so you can come to browse credentials and you can search for AI 900. And if you come here, you have two ways in which you can study this particular certification. One is the self-paced and the other is instructor-led. So both are the same. There is not much difference. Self-paced is that you do it on your own. Instructor-led is there is actually some instructor who has put in the course like YouTube or something online and you're just watching the videos and all. So if you go to the instructor led, and if you scroll down, you can see this is the AI uh, 900 
uh, study material. So I just share this in the chat box again with you all. And you can see it is mentioning everything, okay? What kind of prerequisites are required and etc. There are labs inside this thing. So if you just go randomly to anyone. So right now we did uh, the AI services. That is this. So you can see there is a lab. So this is just for exploration. But if you want to go for a specific service that we saw, okay, that is uh, yeah, fundamentals of AI, okay. So if you see, there is a lab also. Okay, you can go and practice this lab. Okay, if you want, you can do that. You but you would need an Azure subscription. Okay, if you all are students. Uh, you have free access to the subscriptions. Okay, uh, you can go access them. Uh, on, uh, I mean, you just need a student ID card, but you need to belong to a university or a college, and you can get free uh, as your subscription. Okay, as a student. So as long as you are a student, you can access it. Okay, I don't know about the exam. Uh, whether you can give the exam free of cost or not, I, I don't know that. Earlier they used to, but now I think they have stopped, but I'm not sure. But in case you want to use the free account, you can use, but you would need a college ID, okay? Uh, and you would need a college uh, email address, okay, in order to use the Azure uh, you, portal that is there. Okay, so with this, we bring an end to today's webinar. Uh, if you have any questions, please go ahead and ask. Uh, I am there. But apart from that, if you don't have any questions, you have uh, redeemed the badge. Okay. And uh, yeah, if you've redeemed the badge, you've given us your feedback. Please, guys, do not leave without it. It is really, really valuable to us. Okay. And um, uh, if you know, it can help me improve in the future. Okay. Uh, what I could do better and what I could do. Okay, so you can um, just put it in the uh, feedback form. Okay, so please, guys, go ahead and redeem your badges. Please fill the feedback. And if you don't have any questions, uh, you can leave the session. Thank you so much for attending. I hope it was a great and in I mean, it was an insightful session for you all. You learned a little bit about AI, and I hope I could, uh, you know. Um, you know, ignite the curiosity for learning AI. It's not bad, guys. I mean, it is beautiful to use. And trust me, in the, the rate at which technology is coming, this is something that everyone is going to look for. So if you, if you're, uh, the earlier you start, better it is. So please uh, go ahead and don't stop over here. Go ahead and study more on AI. So thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Uh, all the best. Thank you.